All right, this is sure to be the most boring Zaxcom video I ever post. I am just about to update my firmware on this Nova One. It's been a while. I'm on uh, 3.54H or some letter, I forget. Whatever like the highest last 3.54 is. Uh, and I stayed there for a long time because uh, it was really solid. And then they moved to um, firmware 4. Point whatever, 4.0. Uh, and now I think they're up to like 4.61. So I'm going to go all the way up to, I think I asked around on the forums and people were telling me that uh, 4.56 or 9 or maybe even 4.61 were pretty rock solid and they've been using it for months without issues. So I think I'm ready to finally put the Nova one up there. Uh, but before I do that, um, it's been talked about a lot on the uh, Facebook group. If you don't follow the, Z the Zaxcom Facebook group, you definitely should because it's kind of like the, the main place where people are talking about their products and firmware and stuff like that. So uh, when you go from th the 3.0 firmware to the 4, a lot of things change because they made the 4.0 because the Nova 2 came out and the Nova 2 has more uh, inputs and I think more outputs and stuff. So that caused an issue where if you try to run... Uh, your old, if you try to run 4.0 4 on a Nova one that was running 3.0 and you didn't completely wipe your settings from scratch, the channel count wouldn't line up anymore because like, for example, digital ins, there's only four digital ins on the uh, Nova one and there's eight of them on the Nova two. And so when you put 4.0 firmware into this thing, it would like it would think that the next channel, which is RX1, was actually Digital 5. And anyway, things would just be crazy. So you'd basically have to factory reset uh, your Nova 1 when you go up from 3 to 4. Uh, just a heads up. So that's what I'm doing. And so because I'm doing that, and I've done this a couple times with firmware where I pretty much had to like completely wipe the thing out. I do this thing where I record every page... On my phone, I think it's a good way to have a reference to go back to because there are uh, a trillion different little settings in all these menus. And so right now, grab some popcorn. I'm just going to scroll through every page of my Nova. And you're welcome to steal my settings uh, if they work for you. <laughs> they very well may not. Um, here we go. Rolling on the main menu. Oh yeah, these are just fader banks, so I guess this is irrelevant. Here we go. External faders. I don't really use this much, um, but that's the settings. And then we'll go back a layer, and we'll go to track names. It's unfortunate that I can't save these somewhere. Maybe I can, but I doubt it. But these are typically what I do as a preset. Go back. Memory store recall. These should all stay the same because this is you know, being printed to like ROM inside this machine. Uh, my presets I have typically set up. Hey, by the way, Howie, you gotta change this blue on black. That should invert. All the other menus do. Anyway, the tiniest little bug. Um, it should re it should invert like store one. It should say that stuff so we can actually read it. Anyway, uh, eight lav, boom, four lav, and then I have the third presets not set to anything. But I just set this up in a way where I can quickly go to this preset and it's set up for uh, all eight of the MRX uh, receivers to come in in uh, dual mode. And then the four lav is if I only need four labs, I'll go to that preset and get uh, four, uh, two per MRX 414 in single mode, which gets you, buys you a little more range. Um, none of these other things are relevant to a wipe. Here we go. Yeah, this is pretty important because I always, although I only really use like two or, two or three of these uh, and they're pretty uh, obvious what they are. There we go. Lab and boom. These are probably unused or just like little scratch ones. Return mono, return stereo. Yeah, but L, L mono is my first position so I can go from there back or forward. Yeah. Again, these are notes to myself, just kind of mumbling here. These are my auto mix settings. Uh, I like a fast attack and a slow release. Noise reducer, I usually keep it on two. Sometimes I go a little more aggressive, like down to 
three, four, five. Uh, the enables is kind of important, but I'm constantly changing this. So I'm not really worried about those coming back exactly. I use the, the, uh, is this the new? Oh, this is the old track assign page. I like this track assign page better. It's a little more intuitive, although some might argue uh, that it takes more steps as far as the actual routing of things. But here we go. I'm going to go through all 16 of these just so we can see. So my first two are that, and then I do ISOs. And because this is set up for four labs, they're skipping over like this because each RX pair is just one channel. Um, analog. Oh, then I go backwards. I do this trick. I think I might make a video about how I go backwards here. See that? I'll explain that in another video. Um, four analogs, a couple of returns, and currently no digital input set up for this. All right, we'll get out of there. We'll go look at the ENG setup. And this is like a bunch of menus within a menu. Uh, compressor enables. I usually just put them on the actual uh, ISOs which are my wireless on this setup there. Uh, these are the settings I like. Uh, fast attack, a, I don't know if that's a, yeah, that's not kind of a medium-ish decay, I guess. Only a, only a minus three threshold. And I go really high on the ratio to make it kind of more like a limiter. Uh, and these are for inputs, card, and the outputs. Uh, levels. These are good settings to keep an eye on. I'm just gonna let this sit for a second so I can look at it, go down. I keep my five and six set to mic level uh, because I feed a little road go for our social media people on a show I work on a lot. So I just kind of like leave it like that. Sample rate 48K and these, uh, these matrix boxes will change based on what you uh, have record enabled. Re-record set to six seconds. Um, that's definitely handy. TC transport, normal. I'm not gonna go through these, all of these will take forever. It's like, as if I'm reading you the manual. Uh, all right, brightnesses, those change a lot. Internal, yeah, most of this stuff's what I want. The, like these little details, like your, your hold time and stuff, like those are the little ones that you start to realize are gone when you do a factory wipe. You're like, oh, what did I have it set to? Um, Track name presets. Yeah, I guess I'll take a picture of this just so we can see what I used to have. It just sucks that I can't save. Maybe I wonder if you can save these somehow as a as an importable file to bring it back in. It's just a pain that I have to sit there and retype all these, right? Anyway, uh, note presets. These are, yeah, I think I've only added that first one. These are all kind of stock, I think. Um, these are good to know. Auto speed, auto on the uh, fan speed, only when it gets hot. Uh, bank keys once, yeah, that's stuff I like, so I don't have to hit the bank keys multiple times to go from bank to bank. Single, record, TC offset. I forget about this setting. I wonder if I, this is something I've been meaning to change. No offset or TC offset. I think you want no offset. That's the one that I've kept telling myself. I'm like, oh yeah, you gotta rewrite your presets with that. Um, and basically what that does is they change this in some later firmware, um, where when you do a re-record, instead of it, like writing in the notes of the new file, like here's the offset of time code for post to use, to nudge it back onto the initial, the original time. It just keeps the original time instead, if you're set to no offset. So now you have two files with the same time code, which I know is considered dangerous. Um, but I guess they did something where they like reallocated the tracks on the second version where it would like instead of being tracks 1 through 16 it would go 17 to 32 or something like that it would do something to to make it organized on the uh, post end of things Whew. anyway this is a lot about nova just so we know where we're coming from this is a uh, 3.54 h and uh yeah, all this other stuff's been like this for a long time uh setup warnings that's what i like right there setup power Currently, these are two are off, but these are things I'm turning on and off all the time. I really wish they would put these settings in the input pages so we can get to them quicker so I don't have to go, you know, seven layers deep into this menu. All right, setup advanced. Oh, yeah, this is all the, the real fine tuning stuff that I try not to go into too often, but 
take a picture of it, especially these things I think are some of my preferences. And yeah, that's good. Setup walkie, I never use that. Um, I think those are just the stock settings. I don't really use this output setup where you can tell it to like, when you uh, hit record, it will mute a certain output or stop. It will, oh, it will, it will mute if you record or stop. So the only time they'd ever hear it is if it was during playback, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I've never really gotten into that. I think people like to use those on commercials or I guess narrative sets. The tough thing is when they do a rehearsal and you want people to actually hear it, then you have to go in there and undo it. Anyway, uh, these are my home menu setups. I always thought this name was weird for this section, home menu setup, but it's basically like these are the pages that'll toggle when you're in the main view with the star button. So uh, I like card page is kind of like my, my main place to be. It's funny that I have the ENG page. I think I only have the ENG page because it shows information that I can't see when I have too many cards. Because when, I mean, too many uh, card tracks, too many ISOs, like when you have more than, I don't know, eight or 10 tracks on this page, it like, sh it pushes all like your take information off the screen or truncates it uh, so you can't see it. So that's my like loop, that's my little loophole to, f to still get to it pretty quickly just by toggling. All right. You see that? Oh shit. I went too far. All right. Here we go. Yeah. We already saw that. I think that's it. Is there anything in these menus that I should like? actually go into I don't think so these are all just settings what does this thing go to oh it's like another line that does the same thing okay same as that um these are just buttons that lead they kind of do what the, these buttons do some of these and um so yes but you know what we do need to look in we do need to look in these uh not necessarily in here and not necessarily in the queue page Record enables, this is all gonna change anyway, but that's like my starting, my setting. And the thing is, it's gonna remember these, but I need, that's the whole point of this video is I need to uh, nuke my uh, presets and make new ones. So output, assign, one through four. Yeah, that's important. The tone goes here. I always forget like how I have this routed, but this works the best for the way I do things. Uh, basically my Output one is sending out of, uh, no, sorry. What is this? Oh, this is for my boom track. Boom is not an auto mix, but the labs are. Um, let's go one more. Oh my God, this video is so long. Whew. Where am I? Where am I? That was output assign. Card. Oh wait, we didn't really look into five and six. Let's look at that. Just to remind ourselves, we need to toggle the six, five, six, same. And that's what feeds the CL uh, camera link. Then let's go back to card mirror page. Yeah, some of these settings are pretty important. Mirror settings, for example, mirror mode off right now, but once I put a card in, I'm rolling. I usually flip that to continuous folder to mirror this gets changed based on the project each day it's kind of like setting your daily folder uh leave these as is b-way poly's fine 24 bits i like this file naming structure which is like the long version i guess it's supposed to protect against uh accidentally creating two files with the exact same name which would cause one to maybe get deleted uh folder change is set to auto change mirror options uh i like to keep this on so it will Remember my mirror settings after I do a power cycle. Uh, we'll keep going down. Don't format, the, well, there's no mirror card in here now anyway, but we'll leave that as no TC offset. Okay, so that's that menu. Mirror file, this is empty because there's no mirror card. Primary card, I don't want to mess with this, but I do want to see, we change that. I don't want to delete the last segment. I don't want to erase a current folder. I don't want to format. ISO attenuation, I don't really use it, it's off. I don't really understand it, to be honest, and I can't seem to get anyone to explain it to me in a way that makes sense. Um, MP3 support off, because it doesn't work. Even, it's funny, it's still in, it's still in there. Uh, MP3 was something that these things kind of did when, it, when the Nova first came out, but then it was having bugs and issues, and then I guess Zaxcom could never quite figure out how to make it work, so they just kind of gave up on it. Anyway, uh, mirror settings, we just were in here, and that's it. So I think that's everything in this 
list. Inputs, this is all gonna have to get done by hand, which is kind of a pain, but you know, usually I start with my RX channels. And the only thing that I really care about is the, the high pass uh, and that the Zaxnet IDs line up. These are, again, a little funky looking because I have this little method I use where I skip over and I come back the other way. So I go one, skip one, three, or sorry, two, skip one, three, skip one, four. And then when you go to the next one, it's five. And then if you keep going back down, you skip one, it goes to six, down, skip one, seven. And it like works its way back. And that's just a, a, a way I've learned to uh, add in wireless. Like when you think you're gonna use four in single mode and then suddenly they're like, hey, we need a fifth one. Uh, it's just a quick way to uh, deploy a fifth lab and the least amount of changes you need to make. But again, I feel like that could probably use its own nerdy video because it's kind of pretty geeky stuff. Um, we just were in here because I changed my time code, my uh, my internal battery. So now it looks like we're holding time code. But yeah, we'll take uh, next page just to peek at these. That's the latest frame rate, but that's constantly changing. One of the reasons I'm looking forward to updating is because they finally put the uh, frame rate on the main page. So I really would like to see that all the time. So looking forward to that in a uh, four point something. Um, Go back a layer or two. Next page, we've been in here. There's nothing to see, right? That's cool. All right. Why am I still in here? What is it? My brain can't do it. There we go. Uh, time code, we're just there. Track assign. This again. We saw that when I went in, in the back, the, the new way. So you can get to the old way through there. The new way. This is what the old way looks like. This is what the new menu looks like. It's a little more intuitive on the brain, in my opinion, and many people's opinion, because we took a poll on the Facebook, Facebook on the Zaxcom Facebook group. Um, Zaxcom, uh, Zaxnet settings. Yeah, I definitely need these these to stay the same and come back. So slowly go through here and make sure I can see them all. Uh, if you ever change your, here's a fun little fact. If you ever change your Zaxnet power on the Nova, Seven's the highest, I think one or zero is the lowest, zero's off. And now that I've done that, <laughs> it's gonna require a reboot, a reboot to for that, any changes you make there to take effect. I don't know why that is, but um, if you make Zaxnet uh, power, that's like the amount of juice coming out of here, um, you need to reboot the, the whole machine to get it to take effect. All right, so we saw all these. There's no sub menus, is there? Looking here, not touching that, not touching that. And yeah. All right, go back one. I think I'm at the bottom of that list. What else is there? Is there anything else I haven't seen? I'm gonna go back one more time on the main menu and just look around and make sure there's nothing I didn't. I went into all those little power menus, right? Like these little advanced. We went through all these. We went through here. We went down to these advanced power warning setup. Yeah, we did all that. Okay. And let me just look at the faceplate and just see if anything's sticking out to me. Like, oh yeah, you never looked there. Uh, we looked at inputs. And again, I didn't go to every single one, but like, like I know my RX setup and analog can be whatever it wants. I mean, these are all going to get changed based on the day and the setup. So not too worried about those. Um, yeah. And what else? I think that's it. So let's see if I look through all the buttons, I saw everything. Q, nothing to do. TC, we've been in there. Tracks, we've been in there. Zaxnet, we've been in there. Media, settings, yes. Output, routing. Coordinables uh, is not really relevant. Q, not relevant. Scene, take name, not relevant. Uh, as far as remembering the, any specific settings, I think that'll do it. So I'm going to make another video after this, uh, that actually shows the process of updating the firmware, which might be one of the easier ones, uh, to do for the Zaxcom line of equipment, but, uh, we'll tackle that in the next one. See ya.